اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام علی رسول اللہ وعلى آلہ وصحبہ اجمعین رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل الاقدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی As I mentioned last week as well, uh, uh, we'll always go over a little bit of summary from the last week so we have some connection to the talk. Uh, bef- uh, before even I go into sh- to the, the summary, uh, part of the talk last week I was talking about uh, two of the Sahaba who migrated with uh, Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an. One was Ayyash and the other one was uh, uh, Al-Harif. And uh, <coughs> I mentioned uh, about Ayyash that I was not sure about uh, whether these two actually they they left Islam uh, when they were um, captured by the the Meccans while they were trying to migrate. One Ayyash made it to, to Medina, but after that he came back with uh, Abu Jahl and his other stepbrother. And about uh, uh, about the other one, uh, it was clear that he returned back to Islam. As Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an, he sent a letter to him with the ayat that were revealed about the people who left Islam, uh, and then uh, they used to think if a person who has become Muslim and if he has left Islam, there is no hope for him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, allowed them, if anybody who does the tawbah comes back, uh, he's accepted as a Muslim. About Ayyash, <coughs> uh, Hikul Maktoum does not talk about that. Uh, there's a sister actually, he brought it, she brought it up about, uh, uh, she heard a talk in which it was mentioned that he did return back to Islam. Then I did a little bit more research, and Ibn Hisham, uh, one of the famous books of the Seerah, does mention about Ayyash, that, uh, about Ayyash uh, uh, and, uh, and the other one, Rasulullah actually made the dua as well. And uh, the dua was accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and both of them returned back to Islam. Okay? Just a correction, so we leave from here with the correct information. Uh, it's not that I, uh, I was saying that I did not find in the Rahikul Maktoum talking about the subject. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, the end part of the second pledge of allegiance of Aqaba yeah, last week. And then we talked about the migration of the Sahaba that happened. So that uh, the, the second pledge happened uh, at the end of the 13th year of the, of the, the prophethood of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from there until the next year, which is the 14th year of the prophethood, uh, mo- Almost all the Sahaba migrated except Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abu Bakr, Ali, and a few more who did not have means to make it to Medina. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Abu Bakr and Ali, uh, and of course Abu Bakr's family, uh, they did not migrate to Allah because Allah subhanahu wa taala did not give them the permission yet. Okay, that shows one of the things is that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated by the permission and by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so that, that's another way of understanding that. It's not Rasulullah was trying to escape to save his life or anything, as we will see further inshallah as well. Um, so th- this is kind of a, what we covered. Today uh, inshallah we will talk about, uh, <clears throat> uh, we'll talk about uh, what happened after most of the Sahaba migrated. And then uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to get the permission from Allah. When the kuffar of the Makkah, when they realized that the pledge happened and the Sahaba have started moving out of Makkah to uh, Medina, that's a con- there was a real concern for the Meccans. Why? One, uh, they, they knew the strength of Al-Aws and Khazraj, the two tribes of Medina. They were famous to be warriors. They were soldiers. Yes, they fought for silly reasons, but they were continuously in the state of war. So they, were, they, they knew how to fight. So they could, they, they could really protect Rasulullah and the Sahaba, the newly Muslim uh, 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 the immigrants. Uh, they, they would protect them, and hence the Meccans were concerned. Not because of only they were strong. There is a bigger concern for them. As we know, that Medina is on the, in the north of Mecca, right? On, uh, uh, on top of, if you look at the peninsula, Mecca is down here, Medina is here. Uh, I, I, I had the, uh, the, the, the map, but unfortunately we, don't, we cannot see it. So, uh, hence the, Syrian, the, the Syria or the Bilad al-Sham or the Byzantines at that time, they were up north. Hence, if Meccans had to do any kind of a trade, they had to pass through the Medina. 
So the caravans had to pass through the area where the people of Medina were. So that was a bigger concern for them because that was their trade route. And that trade route, as the book mentions as well, and mentioned in the other books of the Sira as well, they used to do the, uh, they used to do the trade of 250,000 dinar, quarter of a million of dinar. One dinar is equivalent to 4.25 grams of gold. And that, if you calculate from I was doing last night to make sure what is the, uh, what's the price of the gold these days, it's $53.60 per gram. If you multiply that by well, whatever 250,000 times 4.25 gram uh, n uh, number of kilos of gold that can be, the value comes out to be close to $57 million. $57 million, that's a huge amount of money, especially when we are talking about the people of the Arabian Peninsula who were quite poor. They, they did not even have enough clothing. They, to a point, they were killing their daughters alive to some, some extent. Not all of them, but they were doing that as well. So that, was, that could have been a big upset for, uh, for the Meccans, hence they were worried about that. So keeping all this in mind, now the Meccans, they gathered, uh, as the report talks about, on the 26th of the Safar, 14th year of the Prophethood of Rasulullah which was the 622nd uh, year of the Common Era. Uh, this was about two months after Rasulullah had the pledge uh, with, uh, with, the, with, with the people of Medina. Now, while they, so they, they gathered, and they wanted to talk about what to do with Rasulullah and the Sahaba who have migrated to Medina. And the people who gathered, they were all the leaders of the Quraysh, Quraishi tribes, they gathered. That including, some of the names are mentioned there as Abu Jahl, we know a famous name, Jubair ibn Mut'am. Another famous name, uh, uh, he was from Abd Manaf also, Rabi' bin uh, Rabi's two sons, Shayba and Utba. Another bin Al-Harith, and uh, Al-Hajjaj's two sons, Nabih and Munbih, from Bani Saham. And also Umayyah bin Khalaf from Bani Jumah. So these are some of the names which are mentioned there, but in general, all the leaders of the Qurayshi tribes were there. Why? Because that was a huge concern for them to make sure that they do something about what, what, what has just happened. So they knew that Rasulullah did not migrate yet. Abu Bakr has not migrated yet. So they wanted to stop Rasulullah wasallam. Now when they gathered, they start discussing what should we do with Rasulullah now. Some of them said, well, a proposal was made. Let's ex uh, uh, expel, uh, expel Rasulullah out of Makkah. But they thought of it, that's a problematic thing. If they expel Rasulullah they saw how the people were accepting the da'wah of Islam. Hence, they said, well, if we expel him, he will go talk to the other people, other uh, tribes of the Arabian Peninsula, and his speech will touch their hearts, hence we cannot do that. Then they say, okay, what about if we imprison them, imprison Rasulullah And they say, well, Rasulullah's followers and maybe his tribe, they will overpower them and they will release Rasulullah So that's not acceptable either. Then they said, Abu Jahl is the one who came and came with the idea, let's assassinate Rasulullah Okay? And he said, okay, that one man we can assign and go and he killed Rasulullah Then they thought among themselves, well, if one person goes and kills Rasulullah the tribe of Rasulullah would not leave them alone. They will come after. So they said, okay, let's do it this way. Then we will appoint one person from each tribe. Now, each, all of them will strike Rasulullah at the same time. And if that happens, that means that Rasulullah's tribe have to fight with all the tribe. And that's not going to happen. Hence, they will agree on some sort of a blood money. They will give the blood money to the tribe of Rasulullah or the family of Rasulullah and then this matter will be shut, shut closed. Now, this is the plan they, they started with. Now, on the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to disclose the, 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 uh, the plot that the Quraysh were making against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Not only to disclose the plot, but also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
allow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to migrate from Mecca to Medina. Now, <clears throat> I want to make sure one thing clear here, that yes, they plot, they were trying to assassinate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from there on, but they tried to assassinate Rasulullah sallam prior to that as well, as we talked about that in the seerah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not trying to run away, as Sahaba have already migrated to Medina. Not only that, the Sahaba in Medina, they were waiting for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa already. Whether they plotted against Rasulullah or not, they were waiting for his arrival in Medina. Okay? So that's why I want to make it clear. It's not just running away from Mecca to Medina. Rather, he was acting based on wahi. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him, wahi means revelation. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went to Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an after he found the, got the news from uh, Jibreel, he went to Abu Bakr, and he went to Abu Bakr during the noon time. Now, keep in mind, when we talk about noon time, in, there are no air-conditioned cars running around, or uh, housing, or malls where you can go and stay cool over there. Not The clock tower was not there at that time, no such thing, right? So, uh, the, the hot weather or climate when we talk about during the, the, uh, over there, in summertime, people used to, in general, stay inside their houses. Around noontime, they would stay in the house. And there are many places, uh, still, people do the same thing. Uh, they actually go and take a nap in the afternoon. Okay. So now, uh, when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came in, uh, during a noontime, Aisha radiallahu anha, one of the hadith which is mentioned in Bukhari, that says, لَقَلَّ يَوْمٌ كَانَ يَاتِي عَلَى النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَلَّمْ إِلَّا يَاتِي فِيهِ بَيْذَ أَبِي بَكَرْ أَحَدَ طَرَفَيْنَ النَّهَارِ طَرَفَيْنَ النَّهَارِ means that uh, two uh, extremes of the day, either early in the morning or later in the, afternoon, uh, later in the evening. But this is something very strange that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم came to Abu Bakr. Why? Now because afternoon when Rasulullah is going, it's not only that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم and Abu Bakr would stay in, uh, in the house. Most of the people used to stay inside the house. So hence, there was more of a going at noon time was so nobody would know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to meet Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. Okay, now <clears throat> when Rasulullah sallallahu went there, Abu Bakr really realized right away that this is something important that Abu Bakr Rasulullah sallallahu is there for. And he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam why Rasulullah was there at that time and uh, Rasulullah says, Akhraj min andak. Akhraj min andak. Yani, whoever is in there, Rasulullah asked them to leave the house. Now, Abu Bakr's response was, Ya Rasulullah, innama huma abnatay, yani Aisha wa Asma. Meaning, he said, These are my two daughters, Aisha and Asma, radiallahu anhuma. So Rasulullah uh, uh, accepted that, which shows that Aisha is reporting the hadith how the events were unfolded. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said that قَدْ أُذِنَ لِي فِي الْخُرُوجِ That I was given the permission by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala basically to leave now. See, that, that's a very important point to understand. That Rasulullah left only because when Allah gave him the permission. It's not the issue of the plot that the kuffar were making against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, then Rasulullah uh, 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 Siddiq radiallahu an, he asked, about the as-suhba, uh, Ya Rasulullah, meaning, am I going to accompany you? And Aisha mentions that Abu Bakr became so happy at that time that he started crying. And subhanAllah, and a grown man crying because of happiness and the joy. It's not anything else. This is why Abu Bakr's personality has a completely different kind of, you know, uh, he, he, he knew about Rasulullah Sallallahu that nobody else knew the way Rasulullah Sallallahu knew among the Sahaba. I'm talking about space, especially the male Sahaba. Of course, the wives are different. But, uh, so now, uh, uh, and Abu Bakr, he was also happy that now he will have a long time with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The whole travel that he's going to have is with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, of course, he spent, as we will talk about, three days and three nights in Ghar Thawr, or the cave of the Thawr, with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, when... Uh, uh, then Abu Bakr Siddiq says we, uh, he was already preparing to migrate. He knew that he will be migrating. And Rasulullah, uh, prior to that, he has hinted him 
that maybe Allah will give you a companion. When he was continuously asking, uh, are we allowed to go? Can, 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 he, can he migrate or not? And Rasulullah so was hinting him. And he realized that it was, Rasulullah uh, so was hinting to Abu Bakr that he will migrate with him. And then, uh, hence, he was preparing two she camels for, for the journey. And he was feeding them uh, well, so they become stronger and stronger. And then when Rasulullah came, he offered uh, uh, the camel to Rasulullah And Rasulullah only accepted if Abu Bakr takes the price for the camel. Okay. And now, on the other side, the Meccans, they selected people who are going to strike Rasulullah at the same time. Okay, to, to assassinate Rasulullah sallallahu That included Abu Jahl, Hakam bin Abi al-As, Uqba bin Abi Mu'id, Anada bin Hal, Umayyah bin Khalaf, Zama' bin Aswad, Tu'ayma, Abu Lahab, his uncle, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi and Ubay bin uh, Khalf, uh, and Nabih bin Hajjaj, and his brother Munbih al-Hajjaj. These were the people, they, uh, they plotted against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they, uh, these 11 people, they were planning to uh, strike Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at the same time. Now, about this kind of a plot, Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُوا بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُثْبِتُوكَ أَوْ يَقْتُلُوكَ أَوْ يُخْرِجُوكَ وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ And of course we understand that, that they were plotting and Allah was planning. And Allah is the best planner. And that's what exactly happened here. What Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was commanded here to not sleep in his bed. And he left Ali radiallahu an in his bed in, uh, in, uh, instead. And he left while the Meccans, these leaders, were waiting outside Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He will come out and they will strike Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and kill him. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was reciting Surah Yaseen, part of the Surah Yaseen. And uh, in front of their eyes, he left and he actually he put some dirt on their heads when he was leaving. Uh, the ayah says, We have put a barrier before them and a barrier behind them, and we have covered them up so they cannot see, they could not see Rasulullah while he was leaving in front of their eyes. Now, when they, uh, later on in the daytime, when they saw Ali is coming out of the house, Ali radiallahu anhu, so they realized that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not there. Now, when they realized that, now they tried to block all the paths of the Mecca. So Rasulullah would not be able to leave. And, and they put, a, a, they put a, a bounty on the head of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr, which was 100 camels each. When, uh, I kind of tried to give some numbers about 100 camels last week also. When we say 100 camels, 100 camels means even if you go by a low number of $5,000 per camel today, that becomes, each camel is 500,000. Well, I mean, 100 camels becomes $500,000, right? And 200 camels is about a million dollars. So that's a bounty at that time, subhanAllah, that they, they really realized that what would have happened if Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam would have gotten away from them, or he did get, get, away, from, get away from them. But anyway, now, so because they put this, that kind of bounty, everybody was going in all the corners to figure out where Rasulullah Sallallahu was. Now, Rasulullah Sallallahu what he did here, and uh, as I said, I wish I had, uh, today I really want to have that, we don't have it. So if you, uh, any of you have been to, 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 to Mecca for Umrah or Hajj or something? Okay. If you, if you see the Mecca, Mecca is somewhere here, and Gharathor is actually in south. Not, not north. And the Medina is in north. So instead of going north, because they, Meccans were expecting Rasulullah is migra was migrating to Medina. So instead of going north, he went south. And Gharathor was five mile distance or so. And five mile walking. That's quite a bit of a distance that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr covered. So they went to the, the, the Mount of the Thor and there was a cave in there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Abu Bakr first entered, he cleaned up the, 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 the cave, and then they entered. And the, even the cave, the way the cave is, if, if you are just walking by, you can see who's inside. It, it, the way it is, if you just look down, you are able to see who's inside the cave. And this is what exactly happened as well over there. So, 
when, when some of the kuffar, they did reach to Ghar al the cave of Thor, but they were not able to see Rasulullah and Abu Bakr even at that time. But anyway, so now uh, Rasulullah Sallam went to Ghar al cave of Thor. He stayed there three days and three nights. Now, when he went there, okay, we'll continue mm -hmm. on. If he turn, turns it on, turns it on. Okay, so when uh, they stayed there for three days uh, and uh, three nights, while they were there, Abdullah bin Abi Bakr, radiallahu anhu, this was one of the sons of Abu Bakr. Uh, Abu Bakr had other sons as well, like Abdurrahman was another son who did not become Muslim until the Treaty of Hudaybiyyah. Okay? And Abdullah was a Muslim at that time. And Abdullah, radiallahu an, he used to go during the daytime, he would go to the Kaaba, the Runadwa, the, you can call them parliament of the, uh, of the Quraysh. And he would just continue to listen. Yes? More forward? Is that good? Yeah. Okay. So, Abdullah, Abdullah bin, Abu Bakr, Abi, bin Abi Bakr, he would go to Kaaba. He would gather the news, what the Meccans were thinking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then once uh, the sun goes, would go down, he, he used to go to the cave. And uh, he, uh, he, would, uh, he would tell the news to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what the, 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 the Meccans were plotting against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. On the other hand, was another Sahabi. His name was Amr bin Fuhira. He was uh, freed by Abu uh, Bakr Siddiq and uh, okay. yeah, that's fine. So he used to, um, did it come up? All right, we'll continue on, it will come up hopefully. So, um, Amr bin Fuhira, radiallahu an, he used to bring uh, the cattle uh, along with him that had the sheep and the goats and all of them. And then uh, the purpose of that was, uh, was twofold. One was when all those goats and the sheep would uh, walk on the path toward the, the cave of Thor, that would take away the footprints of Abdullah bin Abi Bakr and also Amr bin Fahira also. That which direction the, uh, the, they walked towards. Okay? And uh, also he used to bring enough milk for both Abu Bakr and uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, now when Ali, uh, on the other side, when they did not find Rasul, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they found uh, Ali radiallahu an. So they took Ali to the Kaaba and they started be beating him up. They wanted to know where the whereabouts of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abu Bakr and Ali radiallahu an, he did not give any of the whereabouts of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When they did not get any info from Ali, now they went to Asma bint Abi, uh, Abi Bakr. Abu Jahal went to Asma radiallahu anha, the daughter of uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, and uh, he started asking her about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she st she did not give any news either. And now look at them; these are young adults. It's not like a very mature, very old uh, uh, man or women. They're young adults. And uh, probably in their teens, uh, max in their early 20s. As we know that uh, Ali radiallahu an, he became Muslim when he was about 80 years old. And this is the 13th or 14th year of uh, prophethood. So you're talking about maybe 21, 22 years Ali was at that time. And As uh, Asma was also very young. Now, <clears throat> when... Asma did not give any, new, uh, any information to Abu Jahl. Abu Jahl hit her. And he hit her so hard that uh, the earring that uh, came off of her, of her ear, meaning it, it, it cut the ear and came off. 
but she still did not give any of the whereabouts of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's something, uh, something for us to learn, that to be, to, to be persevere in the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Okay? To, 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 to have, to, uh, to, should not be giving up our deen for any kind of a hardship that we face. Okay? Uh, now, uh, moving forward, when, uh, because there were 100 camels were, uh, was the bounty on, on the head of East Rasulullah and Abu Bakr, people start going in all directions of, uh, of Mecca. And there were some people, they ended up by Ghar al Thawr, when Rasulullah and Abu Bakr were still there. And Abu Bakr said uh, uh, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Ya Rasulullah, only if they look at their, their footsteps or, or at their feet, they will be able to see us. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Ma dhannuka ya, ya, ya Abu Bakr, bi ithnaini Allahu thalithuhuma. Ya Abu Bakr, what do you think of those two, among two, the third one is Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That, 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 that's what's called tawakkal on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Okay? Tawakkal on Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is a concept there has to be understood that reliance on Allah has to be understood properly. Reliance on Allah means it's not something that we say, for example, for example, you prepare uh, 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 all the efforts and you say, think of it, or oh, after I have done all that, I am putting my trust in Allah. No, this is not how the reliance on Allah works. Reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or tawakkal on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there for a believer. Before an action, during an action, and after an action. Yes, we will take care of all the means as a Muslim. As we can see, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's migrating from Mecca to Medina. He's making all the planning to make sure that he makes it safe to Medina. Yeah? And while, think of it this way. We talked about, uh, uh, well, l- uh, last semester. We talked about Al-Isra wa Al-Mi'raj. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to Masjid al-Aqsa, from Masjid al-Haram to Masjid al-Aqsa in part of the night, and he came back. And that included going to the heavens also, meeting uh, uh, the, the Prophet. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who gave him uh, uh, the, 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 the gift of the Salah to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And that's in the part of the night, not even the whole night. This travel was much shorter than al al miraj right? Now, here Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa is going through all the trouble and hardships. Because Al-Isra wa Miraj was miraculous, yeah? This is a miracle, that was a mu'ajizah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Well, this is an action that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was performing for us to also learn. Because this is the kind of things that we are expected even to perform in, in, in cases that we have to. This is why we see Sahaba did, Abu Bakr did, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. So this is an action Hence, Rasulullah is going through all the difficulties and he's showing us, look, you have to make plans, you have to plot, so you can make it safely. Yeah? So you don't just say, oh, I rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I leave everything for Allah to, to do it for me. This is not how it works. Yeah? Okay. Then, um, then after the three days were passed and uh, the things calmed down in Mecca because they kind of uh, lost the hope that... Uh, they will get Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Abu Bakr. So now, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam already had, uh, it was said that uh, Abdullah bin Urayqat, he was a non-Muslim at that time, and he was hired uh, to give Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr the guidance from Mecca to Medina by a safe path. Okay? And uh, the way it was done, Subhanallah, I'll just show you at least to get an idea. Here, the green line that you're seeing was the normal path from Mecca to Medina. You can see it, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because I don't know, by using phone too many times, things flip and all those things rotate. Uh, okay, so the green line is the normal line that uh, they used to follow. The red one is the path that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam followed. So it was, uh, they, were, they were going like a kind of a zigzagging around the main path. So they, they did not lose the path, but the terrain or the path that they took was a path that, uh, uh, so, so, so nobody would be able to follow them. That's, that's the idea. So you're taking all the precautions to make, uh, make it to Medina safely. Okay. Now, while the Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr were on the way to Medina, there were a few incidents happened. And uh, 
uh, you may have thought of it, okay, why Amu did not talk about the spider incident, or some of them talk about the pigeons that laid e eggs over there. The pigeon story is, is weak anyways. But spider one, there are many uh, reports about that. Uh, at the Ghari Thor, the, the, the Kuffar of the Makkah, when they looked at the spider web, and they let it, uh, they thought of it, how can somebody enter into the cave while the spider web is there, right? Uh, and that's considered as uh, one of the miracles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Abu Bakr like that. Um, now, uh, there's a, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about that as well. Sometimes, you know, you think of it, that to be protected, you need very strong people around you or armies around you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can protect us by even using very weak soldiers of him. Think of the Ankabut or when we talk about spider. It is referred as the house of the spider is the weakest house. Isn't it? We know that the way they build the house, the, the web they build and they live in, is the weakest one. All right. So let me just bring that up. Okay, so that's what I was talking about. Uh, the green, uh, I'm so, uh, I could not fit it in this way, so I put it sideways. It's all good. Uh, so the north is this way, yeah? Okay, uh, so uh, Mecca is here, so and the, the Jabal Thor, or the Mount of uh, uh, Thor is here. So they travel, instead of traveling this way, they traveled backward. They went down. And after that, then they took the path, the, uh, Okay, the Tariq of Hajra is the, the, the green, uh, green one, sorry. So the green path is the path of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The red one was the original path that people normally used to take, okay? Um, and the, uh, the, this is how Rasulullah, the, uh, Abdullah bin Uraqat was taking him, that he was kind of, kind of going like this way, uh, zigzagging around the, the, the real path. That would, of course, uh, must have taken longer time than the normal time, but that made it safe trip for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr. Even when they were, were going, there were quite a few incidents happened. Some of them were mentioned in the Sira books like that. That whenever Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an, he would meet somebody. And so one of the things is you see that uh, Abu Bakr when he was traveling, and another report talks about, sometimes he used to walk in front of Rasulullah sallallahu Other times he would walk behind Rasulullah sallallahu And uh, Rasulullah sallam asked Abu Bakr, why was he doing that? And Abu Bakr's response was, Ya Rasulullah, whenever he felt that somebody will come from the front and attack Rasulullah he would go in the front. Whenever he felt somebody might come from the back, he would go in the back of, behind Rasulullah and walk behind him. I mean, that was the love of, of the Sahaba to Rasulullah Okay? And then, uh, anyways, so whenever they would meet somebody, and uh, a person would ask about Rasulullah that who is this guy to Abu Bakr? Abu Bakr said, هَذَا رَجُلِي رَجُلُ that this is a man who guides, uh, who, 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 who guides me to the path. path. Okay? Now, this, uh, of course, Abu Bakr was not lying, but a normal person who would think about what Abu Bakr just said was like as if Rasulullah is just a guide who was taking him uh, to the path or wherever they were heading to. While in reality, Rasulullah was a guide. He was guiding Abu Bakr and all the, Muslim, all the people of the world towards the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how Abu Bakr used to give the answers to, uh, uh, to, to the people who were meeting. So this way, the identity of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa continued to be the, uh, undisclosed and people would not know that Abu Bakr and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa were uh, going which direction. Okay. Now, there's a whole story of Suraqa bin Malik is mentioned. Uh, Suraqa bin Malik was another person who was not a Muslim at that time, when he heard about the bounty of 100, 100 camels, so he found out from some people that, uh, he's, uh, that there are two people were going in one direction. So he realized that's Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr. And uh, of course, uh, Amr ibn Fuhira was uh, with them and Abdullah ibn Rayyad. But the, specifically those two people, somebody pointed out. So now, when Suraqa found out, he secretly left the gathering where people were talking about the, the, some people were walking in that direction, and he went, he went in the direction of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu Bakr. And he had a very uh, uh, fast horse, swift horse he had, and he, he, he caught up with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu Bakr. Okay? Now, when he came close to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he was getting closer, 
that the feet of the, the, the horse uh, uh, would, uh, would, 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 would sunk into the ground. Okay? First time it happened, and the, these uh, Meccans had these, some uh, strange kind of an omen thing that he uh, took the draws out to see whether he would move forward or return back. And every time he was doing that, it was coming out that he should return back. But still, 100, 200 camels was a lot of money. So he would still move forward. Three times it happened. When third time it happened, he realized there is something is not right. Okay? And that the horse is stumbling and his, his feet are, are sink, were sinking. That, that's not normal. So now he talked to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Rasulullah approached him also. And uh, he told him to return back. Even though Suraka offered him uh, them food and drink and stuff, they did not accept from him. And then uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you return back, because he was scared now. Suraka was scared also what was happening to him. So return back with this condition that you will not give the secret to anybody. That's one thing. Second thing, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave him, uh, the, the, the book only talks about a piece of parchment, but other hadith discuss the, the concept, the, the issue. He, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu promised him, it says that uh, Sivar al-Kisra. Sivar al-Kisra means the bracelet of the Kisra or the king of Persia. You know, it's kind of a strange, isn't it, that a person who seems to be trying to leave Mecca to Medina, trying to protect his life. And he's talking about taking over Persians, one of the superpowers of that time. That's called somebody who has a victorious mentality. That, 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 and that's very important to have. And all Muslims, we should have this victorious mentality because we have the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The creator, this is a message from the creator. And this is the last message from him that came through Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We should be honored when we're reading the Quran this way. That uh, the, how big of a thing it is that we have the last message from Allah azza wa jal that we are reading and we are inshallah we we'll understand and implement in our lives. This is how we should look at it, right? Okay. So now, and that's the thing that gave Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this victorious uh, 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 mentality. And the very same message exists today as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the glad tiding of the Romans and Persians will be under your feet. Their treasures will be under your feet. You will be controlling all that. Hence, the, the, and, and this, uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of digressing, but I think it's it worth it. We will continue the hijrah next week also. I guess I will not be able to finish. But uh, uh, Suraqa bin, bin Malik, interestingly, he, he also believed in that. Even though he's a kafir, he believed in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that he does not lie. He's an honest person. He's a sadiq ul amin. Whenever he says, he says the truth. That's what the Meccans, prior to Islam, prior to Rasulullah's uh, uh, prophethood, they believed in him. When it comes to the akhlaq, Rasulullah was at the, at the highest level of, of, of akhlaq prior to Islam already. Okay? So it's not that Islam came and Rasulullah's akhlaq, he became an honest person or a trustworthy person. Hence, uh, uh, the people started listening to him. As a matter of fact, he continued to be a sadiq ul amin. They continued to trust him, but they did not like the message that he brought. They did not like what, the, 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 what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was commanding them to do. Yeah? Uh, so uh, that parchment that was given, the writing that was given about uh, that he will get the bracelet of uh, Kisra. So what happened was, the, uh, Rasulullah sallam passed away later on, and Suraqa still had the parchment. And uh, once he got very sick, to a point, his family members, they started preparing his funeral. And uh, he woke up, and he asked the family members, what happened? What's going on? They said, we were preparing for your funeral, subhanAllah. And Suraka says, don't worry, I'm not going to die. <laughs> this is how he's talking. And they said, what, what, they were surprised, why was he saying that? The reason he was saying, because he remembered the promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that he will get the bracelet of the Kisra, and the Persia was not conquered yet by the Muslims yet. And that happened in the time of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an, and that was given to Suraqa bin Malik at that time. And he made him walk with not only the, the, the bracelet, but rather other things that the, the king had. And when, when he made him walk, he said, uh, like, he was from Bani Madlaj, and he said, okay, 
that uh, subhanallah, a person from Bani Madlaj is walking with, uh, with the crown and whatever the, the, the king used to wear at that time. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how Allah raises the level of the people because of Islam. The izzah, the honor comes through Islam. As the famous statement of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an is that said, he said that uh, uh, we used to be disgraced people and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the honor through Islam. And if we look for honor anywhere other than Islam, Allah will disgrace us again. And subhanallah, that's what the situation is for us. We have moved away from Islam and we have been disgraced now. But as an ummah, we can get the honor back as long as what we do, we, we do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do, inshallah. Now, Surah bin Malik moved away. We'll talk about Umm Abad, uh, 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 Atika bin, Kha, bin Khalid, uh, Khuzaiya uh, next week, and then how Rasulullah sallallahu reached to Quba, and after Quba, Rasulullah entered into Medina. And uh, I'll do some concluding remark about the, 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 the Hijrah as well, inshallah, next week. So we'll stop here. If there's any questions or comments, inshallah, I'll try to answer if I can.